dear viewers, here we are back on the test world today um, to build another house for Bordia. And I'm quite ha happy uh, for this house, and it seemed like, like you were as well. Uh, and with you, I mean uh, <laughs> two, two guys who uh, commented on, on the latest video uh, with the funny names of Bread, Toasted Bread and Warwick, your grandma's fear. Um, <laughs> so thank you for that, thank you for the comments. Um, and since you like this house and wanted to see something bigger or something else, we're going to try a townhouse variant today. So it's going to be a little different, um, but based on the same style here. So what I've done is that I've lined up a few new new things here. Um, for the roof, we're going to use these, um, what are they called, shingles. And so these are, these are quite funny. It's like pieces of wood that you smash together and you know it forms a roof here um, but otherwise it's gonna be pretty much the same the foundation of uh, this plastered stone like I did over there but possibly the lower uh, level of the house will be all the stone we I don't know uh, we're gonna see because it's gonna be a two-story building and as you can see I found some other Tudor frames here I found this fancy Tudor which connects really funky so that's that's a thing that we may use and I found these windows that are super cool um, they are as you can see placed uh, quite uh, you know uh, on the back of the block actually so we may uh, so we may use the vertical slab variation of the tutors to make it look nice here um, the, the pillars are still going to be these birch beams and fireplace still going to be brick I think and oak wood stairs is still gonna form the framework for the roof. So it's gonna be pretty much the same, but really interesting with the two-story building now. All right, so without further ado, let's get this time-lapse started. Or, well, for you guys, it's a time-lapse. For me, it's a lot of building. So here I start out laying out the foundations. And as you can see, this doesn't seem like a very large house, but as you will uh, notice here, I am actually building it outwards on the second floor. And that's a neat thing for townhouses, that they are two-story buildings. And then you would actually have the uh, top floor sticking out a bit. And as far as I understand, it is because that in the medieval times you didn't pay for, uh, well, the size of your house. You just paid for the size of your uh well, the, the foundation, I don't know what to call it. So that is just taking inspiration from medieval times and then it also looks very nice. Um, anyways, now we are trying to place in the walls and I'm using a light stone brick because I wanted a light feeling for this house in general. Um, and up on the second floor, I'm trying to get the floor plan in. There's a problem here, but we'll figure that out later. Now I'm getting the tutors going, um, just so I get a feeling of how the second floor and first floor work together on the outside. Um, but here, as you can see on the inside, we have this problem with the walls down there, because um, they are actually showing on the floor, on the second floor. But that is just a problem that you have with these outward sticking houses here, as you can see. That making it look nice from the outside doesn't always work on the inside. But for now, I'm very happy with the looks of it from the outside. As you can see here, we've got one um, section of the house finished. And that's the thing that I usually do when trying something completely new, trying to finish a section here, because then you've got the feeling of how it, it works together, the first floor and the second floor, with the stone brick beneath holding up the tutors on top. And I like that we have a light look to it because this is the, this is supposed to be a cheerful city. Uh, the banner is the sun, uh, and it's really a thriving uh, city on the sunny plains here. So I wanted a light feel, um, and the tutors connect really nicely using a fancy tutor because it is a fancy city with lots of income uh, and great wealth. So that is what I wanted to show with this house here. And as you can see, if I move inside here, 
sorry for the wonky movement we've got uh the problem still sh uh, that the walls is showing in the floor but that is just a thing with the interior and we are actually able as you can see it's just one block here so we are able to cover that block with something else when we're working on the interior so i'm willing to make uh, sacrifices here for the interior in order to get a nice look here um that's just a thing that you have to do sometimes so now we're beginning uh, to work on the other side here which is going to be the entrance to the bottom floor so you see i had this little front porch and you walk up uh, when you enter uh, but the idea is the same over here with the archway uh, stone brick archway holding up the tutors on top the the roof is also the same so that's pretty much the same design i'm going for here and i lay out the floor and line out some beams to uh, show how the roof is going to be and then I start working on the actual front porch here and that is just a lot of work getting the trapdoors right until I'm satisfied because they really wanted them to be supported by these birch beams down beneath um, but that was just a bit of work figuring out how I wanted it and in the end it turned out quite you know just trapdoors on top of some beams here and then we build another roof here which is the same design again so back to the exterior here, we fill in the tutors and create two uh, roof extensions which are uh, made using the same pattern as the other ones. So for this side over here, I wanted to do something completely different. So I make a another uh, design for a roof extension which is uh, placed to uh, the left here. Um, of the roof so I think it's important at this point when you're using the same roof designs multiple times that you also vary uh, your designs so you get an, a house which has a nice architecture uh, and some nice proportions um, so taking a look at it from above you see now that I'm filling in uh, these wooden shingles for roof material um, and it's starting to take shape here. It's got an interesting shape at this point the house and I'm satisfied with that So uh, let's move inside now because as you can see I am now uh, trying to uh, Cover up the shingles with wood here So I create a ceiling in here and I think it's important at this point to use different types of wood one for flooring and one for the ceiling so now that the roof is done here on the outside, let's head back uh, inside and take a look on what's going on in there. Because as you can see here, um, it can get really problematic trying to cover up uh, from your roof material here. When you have uh, materials like these shingles or another block that you're using as roof material. But it is, it is important to have a ceiling. Um, and I just find that for me personally, um, I feel like uh, I, I can sacrifice some of my interior freedom for exterior beauty. So, Because you, you are actually able to cover up most of it. You just have to make sure that you can actually uh, make an interior that really works. So now it is just a matter of placing in the last walls on the bottom floor here and cleaning up some stuff, making sure everything looks cool here. Uh, and I, I have to say I'm sorry about my embarrassingly poor placement of railings here on, on my sta staircase. You know, I, I'm not as experienced with Conquest Reforged as it as it may seem. Uh, but but here, you know, it, it, it's it's really looking quite quite nice at this point. Um, and I'm just cleaning up some stuff. So let's let's just uh, fly around this house and and see uh, what is what we have made so far. Um, as you can see, I I'm flying around at this point and, and doing lots of stuff, uh, which is just small details. And that's an important phase of, of any build. Uh, for example, I decide that I want to add this little roof extension that you see here to the right uh, in order to give this side some more detail. So all that stuff comes uh, when you're just flying around making details. And I also add in some real locks here. Um, I, I figured that would look a um, little bit better. So now that we have come so far, I will not uh, keep you any longer with this time lapse. 
um, as you can see I'm standing here myself admiring the house um, so so here inside as you can see it still needs some some cleaning up you know I've left some blank spaces here um, because as I said before I actually prefer sacrificing some freedom on the interior for the exterior beauty and and what and and while this may look a bit weird at this point um, with a bit of creativity you are actually able to cover up for all of this ugliness later on when making the interior um, and that, that is what I'm going to do now so when I'm done with this we will take a show around and I will show you that though this looks weird it, it's gonna look cool in the end I, I promise you so let's uh, jump forward in time and get to the show around so here we are at last and as you can see a lot of stuff has been going on here uh, a lot of fine detailing with the flowers with the banner uh, the front porch has changed here as you, with a nice little uh, flower pot thing um, I've added in a lamp and then you will notice over here something really important has happened and uh, I will explain this later um, actually but for now you can see that the house has been extended here um, with a little uh, outer piece um, that follows the same design with the stone bricks and the light stone bricks uh, over here um, so that is interesting I think you'll like that um, and I, I just happened to note that I after so many hours completely forgot to well fix certain important details here um, you know stuff like this just drives you insane right um, hopefully we are able to do this really fast yeah yeah I think we can we can manage we can manage all right that's almost a fix we'll have to see if it works from the inside sorry about that anyways um, let's move on here over here is as I've said the entrance to this tailor shop um, and down here is the entrance to the living area of the inhabitants so let's go down here first and see how it ended up uh, on the inside nothing really has happened to the the roof here so let's just take a look oh sorry for the lag spike there let's just take a look in here so as we enter you see that this is a house for well two people uh, a tailor and his wife or maybe she's a tailor or a farmer I don't know um, but one of them is a tailor at least they have a, a nice uh, shared bed space here with the painting because these guys are well as I've mentioned before this townhouse is in the wealthy area I guess you can say because Bordier is quite a wealthy town they're supplying the capital city with foods and all that um, and they're part of uh, this uh, wealthy um, kingdom really um, so in here they've got nice space to sit like having chairs and seating space uh, next to a window that's always nice um, and then you have a little fireplace here uh, with a place to well cook and uh, prepare foods and all that um, and of course you've got the banner of Bordia hanging around in some places this is down to the cellars which my little brother actually helped me create so big ups to him he find this really nice texture it's called dark sandstone but it doesn't really look like sandstone it, it looks rather just like a normal s stone which is really worn and uh, yeah so so this is a really nice cellar, I, I think, personally. And we also find these jam jars. I've never seen those before. They are so cool. Um, simple lighting. Always you like to use these torches for cellars. And then they, of course, got some wine because they, the, they are rich enough for all that stuff. So a nice little place with some meats and, and foods. Because uh, you would need to store them someplace cool and dry. Um, so in here, as I said with this extension, um, it was important for me to, to do this because I realized that uh, back in the days, you know, s stuff was not produced on factories. If you were to sell clothes, you would actually have to produce them <laughs> um, 
or at least that's what, how I think it uh, stuff went down th back then, right? Um, so the tailor has his own little workshop in here, tailor workshop. I hope that you can see that it is actually a tailor workshop. I tried to incorporate some tailoring stuff, you know, um, some some cloth or some. This is actually a curtain, but it looks just like uh, pieces of cloth or wool or stuff lying around here that you could use. And you've got some clothes up there, some clothes in this wardrobe, and something that could look like materials or um, uh, what's it called? You know, different colors of wool and other type of cloth. <laughs> I don't know what all these things are called in English, right? I'm not native English speaking, but but all, all that stuff that you would use to create. So he's just been sitting here, and he's got uh, tools and stuff in his drawers for uh, sewing things, stitching things and all that, making tailored tools. So a nice little workshop for uh, for down there. Um, and then the actual tailor shop is upstairs, because uh, that is where people would come and buy your, his clothes. Um, so it's important that they have a nice space here. So I, uh, <laughs> I actually managed to place in the railings correctly here. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, and you see that you can walk up here and enter the tailor shop, which is up here. Nice little, um, <laughs> well, piece of, of cloth there, showing that it's a tailor shop. All right, so this is how it looks when you enter. And what I really like about this is all this color. It's all this color that you would want in a shop filled with clothes. So I I use these wardrobes as my main uh, <laughs> main thing in here. Obviously, because it is a tailor. Uh, but to bring in even more color, I added in lots of carpets also, which also is a symbol of wealth, because um, it is uh, unnecessary really, um, but it looks really cool and adds some nice atmosphere. So uh, I tried both hanging clothes around like this, uh, like uh, on top of or uh, beside the wardrobes, and that really works, I think. Having some light here when you enter is always nice, even though I was a bit skeptical <laughs> with the the, um, the candles here. They would most likely light stuff on fire. Um, so I'm not sure if we should actually change it. Um, in other places I used lamps. You see over here I have a lamp which is hanging. And I like that you can actually walk down here and almost get lost <laughs> in this really... Well not lost, but you know... Um, uh, you c it, it's nice when you're working in larger spaces that you divide it into smaller spaces um, and that also helps when you use these beams um, I really like those so having a ceiling here that is held up by these beams um, over here is one of my absolutely favorite spaces because of this extended roof that I make which creates this nice uh, open space with a lot of light for the uh, people who are uh, the guy who's in the store or girl who's in here selling clothes he would be standing here um, and you see that, that there is actually trade going on with coins and this thing which you would probably use to measure well how much stuff is worth I, that, that's a, an old thing for doing math and such I, I thought it would be fitting here um, and down there they would have well money and stuff that they would sell in um, I always keep such stuff behind the desks in here. Um, so nice little tailor shop, uh, quite large actually, um, but not too much. Uh, and I like that is that you have all these supports here. Really, um, really looks quite cool, and lots of light coming in. Um, <laughs> that thing is completely random. I didn't know what to place there. I thought it looked cool, but as you can see, nice tailor shop quite wealthy people in here, uh, nice light look, and colorful that I said before, Bordia is a cheerful city to be in, uh, it's one of the places that you would hopefully really like to live, um, and I think this extension would not turned out really nice, um, you see that I really tried bringing in some shape into this roof, instead of having just a flat roof, um, trying to have a nice dynamic slanting shape, and then some hanging flowers to bring in life and color. Um, so this is actually exactly what I was going for with this uh, townhouse. So I, I hope you uh, like it uh, too. 
I'm really happy with it and I really look forward to creating more townhouses uh, for you guys and for the actual city. That's going to be really interesting starting the city um, and building with these designs, building blacksmiths and taverns and town hall and all that stuff. Um, so there's much to look forward to. Um, Alright, thank you for today. I will see you soon. This was Game of Thrones. Bye bye.